Hello there, geeks. It's been so long since the last time I made a speed game. Wait, what? What did you say? 11 months ago? Oh, wow. Oh, okay. That... Oh, wow. It's been a year. <laughs> um, so you might be wondering, what is Coffee Apartment? Well, let me tell you the backstory of this. I'm officially part of this council at school that is in charge of activities. Well, sort of. Um, I don't want to show my school life too much, but basically I'm in a council. We talked about how we should have an art and coffee exhibition with students' works around the world. I wanted to participate in that, and I needed to think of something that represents my country well. However, I do not want something that's so repetitive and obvious like ancient sites such as Pak Zua. I know that people with no knowledge of my country will not know those stuff and it's not wrong to draw something that's been drawn before, but I want to draw something recognizable and different at the same time. You know what I'm saying. Fast forward to going to Ho Chi Minh City. I found this particular building at Nguyen Hue Street. I was like, wow. A bunch of coffee shops stacking up into an apartment. That is cool! I took tons of photos of it, especially at night. Then I researched about this apartment and apparently this has existed for a very very long time and it just renovated into this coffee community. The name of the apartment is Coffee Apartment. I also try to find if anyone has use this as a subject of their drawings. Zero results. No, I'm I'm legitimately serious. Zero results. Well, I guess I'll be the first one. The apartment is the perfect subject. One, my country is known for coffee, so I'm gonna draw this as a statement that you should come to Vietnam to drink a coffee fish. Two, it's such a unique apartment. It's a bunch of coffee shops and restaurants stacked up into an apartment. I don't think you would find an apartment like this in Vietnam. Three, nobody has drawn this before, despite it being recognizable, I swear. Whenever I ask people if they recognize my drawing, they said, this is a coffee apartment, without a doubt. Last, it's great for an art and coffee exhibition. Like, I combine two things into one, okay? <laughs> Apologies for sounding like bragging, but I can't help but feeling proud of this. Like, I've been painting this this freaking thing for like two weeks and I've learned so much from this experience. This painting is really out of my comfort zone. I have never drawn such a detailed apartment. I feel like I always draw people and sometimes nature, but I hardly draw buildings. Like you can see on my Instagram, it's just a bunch of portraits, studies, and scenery studies, but I hardly draw buildings. Um, I think that is my weak point. So I wanted to try like a symmetrical detailed drawing. I sketched with my pencil first because I wanted this to be symmetrical. I tried using masking tape to make crisp and straight lines. In the end, I kind of dished that and decided to wing it, you know? I felt, I felt risky, you know? Like, I'm a, dare, I'm a daredevil, y'all. Like, I don't need ruler. I don't need masking tape to make straight lines. I'm, I'm gonna wing it, you know? Yeah, that's how I, I thought um, when I did that, like... Yep. The way I approach this is that I completed the room one by one, as you can see here in this um, video. So instead of giving an overall wash, which is what I usually do, I completed a room before doing another room. I think it worked well when I did that. There are some rows of rooms with the same color, so I could just paint multiple rooms at the same time. You know what I'm saying? I feel like I'm not good at explaining stuff. After painting every single room, I added a little bit more touch and fixed some mistakes. I also had to repaint some stuff because I wasn't satisfied. The next stage is adding lights and making sense of the lights as you will see later. I also wanted to add stars because I just 
like stars. I just felt like black background and it was too boring. So the little touch of lighter blues, it does. The last step is to add some trees. Now I was skeptical about this previously. I thought it would look awkward to have trees down in the bottom. But then when the painting is finished, I found that having trees could, I don't know, make it feel less empty. And I'm glad I included them. Apologies that there is some stuff that I skipped. First of all, it was already like a really long video, like a 15 minute video. And second of all, my camera really likes to um, shut itself down after 20 minutes. Like, it always does that. And then I really hate it. Oh, I need to find a way to make it stop doing that. I think there's a way. But I, yeah, I need to do more research about it. And also, um, apologies for the light. I, oh, I always try my best to get the um, natural morning light. So I always like wake up early to draw and have a better light than this. This is like at night. So I have to use this crappy yellow light to help me draw. And yeah. Writing these tiny letters in the painting is so tough though. Like I don't have a very good handwriting, especially calligraphy. Well, I have a readable handwriting, definitely more readable than in the past. Okay, so in elementary school, it is fundamental to learn calligraphy with a fountain pen. Let me tell you, fountain pens are the worst kind of pens ever. They can squirt on you any freaking time. It was so common to have a pool of ink on your notebooks and on your hands. It can take a week to get these things off your hands. <laughs> okay, apologies for the noise outside or someone trying to sell freaking corns out in the streets. Uh, where was I? Yeah, uh, fountain pens are the worst because they can squirt anytime. Also, looking back at my days, I don't think it's a good idea to give a fountain pen on us because we children were stupid back in the days. What if we poke each other with that sharp nip? What if we shake our pens too hard that we had a huge mess on our clothes, books, and tables? Bad news, y'all. Inks are very bad to get rid of, especially on clothes. So good luck with that. Oh yeah, I was also trying to say that I had really bad handwriting back in elementary school and middle school. In my first grade, we practiced writing one letter per day with sharks, chalks, not sharks, chalks on our little chalkboards and pencils on our notebooks. The teacher would find top five best and worst letters and present them in front of the class. I have a few times got into the worst list and that kind of lowered my self-esteem. It was like the first time we wrote letters, but later I got used to it and I improved to the point that I at least didn't fall into the top five worst letters. One time I got into the top five best K, I believe, and I was so freaking proud of myself. Girl, I got the best K. In the third grade, we moved on to the fountain pens and it was a nightmare for a lot of people apparently. The standard color of the ink was purple and we all had purple ink jars with us. Honestly, I wasn't a big fan of that kind of purple, but now I'm purple is my favorite color. How ironic. <laughs> because we were foolish, clumsy little kids, we always made a mess. The way we learned writing was to rewrite what the teacher read. The teacher would score based on the presentation, the spelling, and the handwriting. I mostly got a B because of my decent handwriting, which is fine because getting an A is nearly impossible. Only kids in the calligraphy league could. Oh my, let's talk about calligraphy contest. It's a thing. No, I'm not pissed that it's a thing because calligraphy is a form of art and I'm envious about the math skills calligraphers obtain. So to those awesome calligraphers, you all amazing, okay? Like I'm. I'm jealous of your skills, and I want that skill from you. But what I'm pissed about is that they would consider an academic achievement and drawing and seeing contests weren't. Like they were all art! 
either take all of them as academic achievements or none. This is writing discrimination! <laughs> For the last three years, we wrote calligraphy with fountain pens. It was a really slow process because we had to make every single word perfect. No mistakes. Perfect. Precise. If you wrote one letter imperfectly in the whole paragraph, you have to do it all over again. We wrote a lot, okay? It's not even a joke. I had a penful callus on my finger and I had to bandage it every time I wrote something. Also, I was a smart person because I avoided getting all the inks splashed around. Basically, we had ink jars to squirt up some ink and it could leave a mess if you were not careful. I found that there were little tiny bottles of inks and the only thing you need to do is to shove one into your pen. That's it. Goodbye in jars. Hello, tiny ink bottles. I don't remember this correctly, but I think it was forbidden to use the bottle type because of no particular reasons but equality, I guess. Jumping to middle school, we used ballpoint pens, and I realized teachers in middle school didn't care about calligraphy. You can write any style as long as it's readable. Wow, for five years, I wasted my time learning calligraphy and for three years with fountain pens. Just Wow! I think it is interesting to learn calligraphy. I just don't like that it's required. That's all I have to say. Like, re like recently, I mean last year, I attempted to relearn uh, different types of calligraphy art style on Skillshare. Hashtag not sponsored. Um, yeah, I did it horribly though. Uh, and then I kind of gave up because I was frustrated. But it was fun. As long as not required, as long as it not required, I'm good. Calligraphy is a nice form of art. Wow, this video is all about calligraphy, right? Okay, let's talk about something else. Let's talk about um, the materials I used. So what I used is acrylics and they're from Blick. Um, I don't remember the specific name, but it's like the primary color sets and they're actually really good, so vibrant. I really like the colors uh, combination. Yeah, it's primary, but there's also other um, kinds of colors like green. Well, they're just green. That is not in a primary color. Yeah, it's a nice, it's a nice set. I'm basically saying and what I like about this kind of acrylic is that it dries up really quickly uh, so you know like I, I'm a pretty impatient person so, so it's a nice thing it's a nice addition that this kind of acrylic paint dries up really fast and really well and the canvas I use um, there's no no specific brain name like it's not like a fancy schmancy kind of canvas it's just canvas i bought out in the streets and it's really cheap so yes uh what else oh yeah the palette it's like a like a paper kind of palette uh, that you just throw away at any time every time you don't need it anymore that, yeah, that's a nice thing. Uh, and yeah, I hope you guys enjoy this video. If you like this, then uh, please like this video and comment and share and subscribe my channel. I've been working my butts off on this um, drawing for two weeks and I'm really happy with this. I'm, I'm actually happy with this. This is probably one of my favorite drawings, paintings I've ever done. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoy this video and stay artastic geeks.